What it do, farmer? <laughs> All right, so this week, uh, this, this is something I've been alluding to, and I've been alluding to it so much um, that I want to actually just make a, a forest week, a, a pine tree week, a, a land investment week. Uh, I've been talking about um, you know, kind of something, something like Shark Week. So we're going to do something like this. So this will be a, um, uh, not exhaustive, but an exploration into starting the process of uh, land buying for harvesting pine, things like that. Um, I, do, I believe in diversification of my portfolio, uh, just like many other people do. And that diversification, diversifying away risk as best as possible. Um, also, you'll probably see a video pretty soon. Diversify, never exclude. Actually, I think it's already out there. It came out this past Sunday or today, I should say. Today is Sunday. Um, and in that video, I talk about diversify, never exclude. Diversify as much as possible, but never exclude any stream of income. Now, that's hard. It, it's pretty much like having, you know, instead of two or three balls to juggle, you have to juggle even more, five, six, ten, whatever. But if you want to become a quote-unquote millionaire, a person that's actually having those seven streams of, in of income, they say the average millionaire has like seven streams of income. So if you want to be one of those millionaires that actually have that much income, uh, and have those different streams, you're going to have to do things to actually have make that happen. Uh, that is going to be uh, investing in property, uh, investing in the market, uh, whichever market it is, also having businesses that are bringing in money in so many different ways. So if there is a market downturn, it doesn't really matter to you. We're seeing that even with um, my different portfolios, how those are actually performing and how I'm seeing the difference between my Roth IRA and also my um, my general investing account. My general investing account was mostly uh, stocks that I pick myself. And then my Roth IRA are some stocks that I pick myself, a very small amount. But for the most part, the bigger portion of it, or the most, uh, the main portion of it, I should say, are ETFs. Now, those aren't. That isn't the portion that has done the best. At my growth portfolio, has done the best. But those are more conservative picks and long-term picks. And I only have so much money that I can actually invest in that because of um, IRS regulations or limitations on uh, putting money into an investment account per year. So you have to find other ways to diversify and other ways to invest in different markets to make sure that we are not caught assed out <laughs> uh, with a tornado blowing, you know what I mean? So uh, let's look at uh, this article from, from uh, Forest to Market. I'll have the link in the description. Um, this is how much money is an acre of timber worth? So I just read this right before I made this video and uh, pretty much what it it talked about is one of their more popular articles that they've actually had on the site and the site is like really polished in terms of look in terms of looks and then also they do have other services in terms of uh, consulting services pricing services and things like that um, really good site really uh, good wealth of knowledge and information and essentially what I want to do is take about the seven acres that I have in forest cut that down reseed it replant it with uh, either pine trees or a mixture of pine and pecans. So if I can do um, pecans in a portion of it, the middle portion of my yard that is accessible, that'd be great. And then I can actually harvest off of that. And then also uh, further back, closer to the um, river uh, that I have in the, uh, or the creek that I have going through my backyard, like back, back in my yard, because I can't even get to it. Um, or I, I never, I don't even venture out there. But if I can take that portion, uh, that's about seven acres or so, and replant that with pine, loblolly pine. Um, and I'm, I've chosen loblolly pine because um, it grows pretty fast. Uh, but we'll see in this exploration of land buying that there is so much that you can actually do with your land in terms of um, uh, uh, making long-term investments in your land that can go for, um, you know, that can rock it up in two to five years in terms of producing uh, pecans where you can get a yearly um, a yearly take home or yearly profit off of that uh, and then it, it's even, it produces even more as you go along and then even longer when you're looking at pine trees where you're looking at 15 to 20 years for some of these all right cool 
So let's read through this a little bit, and I'll skip around here. Um, this article talks about what drives timber prices and what we what it's. Uh, this is actually July fourteenth, uh, twenty twenty. It was when this article was written. So they look at uh, historical data for timber prices from twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen, and they also show how from those two in in that range of time, those three years, um, that the the prices for the two different services which is thinning and clear cut so thinning is you plant a whole bunch of pine trees and then you have to actually go through and thin them out um you're doing this um sometimes at a maybe a, a two to five year mark uh you're seeing what has actually survived over that period of time and then from there um, you're letting it grow out for the rest of the, uh, for the rest of the period, which is like a 15 to 20, maybe even 25 year mark. Um, now you can let it go for longer than that, but that's not good or healthy for the tree. And another video that I've watched, which I, I should be able to find on YouTube in my history, um, it talks about that when you're actually, when you have that much pine or when you have pine that is that age, you're really looking at, um, that pine decaying and rotting out. Um, it's not really supposed to be up for that long or for such a long period of time. And in actuality could, um, uh, diminish your returns on that investment. So this is something where we're taking this, um, we're taking this land and we're purchasing it. And this land could pretty much pay for itself if you plant the right things and do what's necessary, uh, in terms of, uh, the long-term do what's necessary in terms of the long-term care and the actual harvesting of the, um, in a sense, your product here. All right, so uh, let's, one thing I want to get into is the sizes. So reading down here, down here, down here, okay. As a result, the size of trees removed during thinning and clear cuts are quite different and, and therefore vary in value. In general, pine logs, fall into one of the following categories. Logs five to seven inches in diameter at the breast height or DBH are considered pulp wood. So pulp wood is uh, what you use for paper, uh, paper and paper products, toilet paper and uh, cardboard products and things like that. Um, logs eight to 11 inches DBH are considered chip and saw or CNS. So now chip and saw, I do not know what those are. I would assume that's for, um, you'd probably use those for a little bit larger logs and, oh, sorry, you use those larger logs for things like um, uh, maybe like mulch or other products. But actually, let's go ahead and look that up. All right, so we'll look at this article on timberupdate.com. I'll be sure to link this in the uh, description. Um, why should I care about timber products? Back to the basics, dimension lumber, boards, poles. Okay, so this is good to actually go over because poles is like a huge thing and I can even get pretty good money for the timber that I have uh, surrounding my home. And actually those can be used for those light poles uh, and electrical poles that you see on the road all the time. Uh, some places, uh, for the most part, it's cheaper to do wood and then uh, for like rural areas, uh, depending. And then, of course, you know, you have your metal and um, concrete. Concrete, you see those a lot in the city and especially in uh, areas where there is a lot of, um, uh, what's it called, possibility of hurricane damage. So you'll see like the, uh, what's it called, um, you'll see the metal ones as well in terms of like, what we're using for what people use for or what they uh, like companies usually use for their lines. All right. Dimension lumber refers to the lumber that will be used as supports for buildings and structures such as two by fours, two by sixes, and is classified based on overall strength and rigidity of the lumber. Dimension lumber can handle heavier loads, will receive a higher grade while lumber uh, while lumber that's weaker or less rigid will receive lower grade. Boards is a general term that refers to lumber that is cut for decorative uses. 
in this category products are classified based on appearance rather than overall strength so those those woods with like you know maybe you have wood that has some nice knots in it um or not too many knots in it but in terms of decoration um knots i believe aren't that great especially when you're using uh when you're dealing with um uh you cabinetry so my dad's a cabinet maker uh has been since before i was born and time you know since time immemorial um and with with what he does um if he has a, a a knot in the wood that can actually diminish his product in terms of like actually working with it harder to cut and things like that those boards he probably doesn't want or wants to deal with but they also do look nicer when you finish them and then you can actually cut them properly in terms of the way the if you cut them with or against the grain or anything else like that and then of course you polish them and um stain pol or stain or polish them stained and or polish them actually uh in general terms this refers to lumber that is cut for decorative uses in this category products are classified based on appearance rather than overall strength with higher grade boards ideally having very few knots holes or discolorations right so i've seen where like you know the knots are actually good it just depends on the knots because with the knots themselves what will happen is it'll you know um usually those knots are actually just taken out uh in some cases chipped away or depending on how the knot actually looks it can actually be incorporated into the uh, into the overall aesthetic of the product or the finished product poles refers to lumber that will be used to support vertical loads ergo utility poles for holding up electrical wires wood products that fall into this category are graded based on overall height and di diameter straightness and strength so for instance the trees that i have um, from what i was told is for some of the poles that um they um for some of the poles that uh that are produced um from trees that i have that are as high as i have them because they're freaking huge uh maybe i'll put it like a yeah I'll, I'll put a picture in there and it shows the house um but uh for those poles um or for those trees i think somebody was telling me that they have to be about like eight feet in diameter at the very top and then um then they can actually use it uh in terms of like take cutting it down transporting it and then using it for um you know electrical poles or something like that they have standards uh when it comes to that so when we were looking at the uh, pine harvesting it was talking five to seven inches all the way to 12 plus inches in terms of diameter you know in some of these trees they're talking about like eight feet and i was like i, I don't my uh, the guy that works for me he does uh who does work here at the house he was saying that but i was just like that's a lot so um i'm not exactly sure about that and i don't really think that is right i he probably said eight feet but he probably meant like eight inches because at the diameter these trees are probably about look uh, these trees are probably about four to five feet at that at the diameter around my house so they're pretty they're pretty huge and i mean you can make poles out of those all right so as we're looking here um da, 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 wood chips okay cool so what about trees that don't make the cut for saw timber right so we're looking at uh for timber usage here um pulp wood refers to trees or logs that are used to manufacture paper products such as cardboard and fiberboard uh as well as absorbent pulp wood chips are made from trees or logs that have been run through a wood chipper and are used as raw material for producing wood pulp or as mulch in landscaping and gardening fuel energy plants uh, sur uh surfacing for playgrounds and parks and loads of other applications so you can do a lot with the wood chips and that's your cns product um, we'll get off of this article and uh i'll link it in the description you could read it for further because they talk about things like digging deeper so uh, dbh diameter breast height cord hardwood softwood uh classifying timber products so there's a lot of good information in this and there's also a video as well and you can see how you know people use it use these um, pieces of wood or these um or the you know the different uses of timber itself so you can do a lot with this stuff you can go through a lot and essentially you can see how all these different wood products that we have or um or all the different products der derived from um 
uh, timber and things like that, and what we can actually what we're selling into the market and the investment that they're making, and we can see how something like this is going to be um, uh, how something like this can actually uh, be almost like a renewable source of income for you, if you will, uh, because these trees grow and they grow like wheat, you know, and you can do a lot with them. Another article that we'll talk about later on this week. Harvesting pine straw for profit. Questions landowners should ask themselves. Ooh, that one's going to be nice. I haven't read it yet, but I, I read actually like the first uh, paragraph here, but I've already heard about it. And yeah, we're doing that. All right, cool. So how much money is an acre of timber worth? So they broke down this, um, they broke it down over this three year period. And they looked at, you know, what happens or the different um, types. The only thing I don't like about this, uh, this, picture or this um infographic here or this chart uh is that it doesn't really tell me what these uh these colors actually mean so i actually read through and i was looking and i couldn't really see it but um it doesn't like tell me like what age and what the colors actually mean now it does tell you down here of course right in terms of like um it's x it's x axis and uh yeah x and then the y and then i think there's a z here all right so let's read through this. So thinned in 2017, and this goes into price and uh, the what's it called the demand in the market, right? So um, this will determine your pricing, and you're seeing how you have your increase, your increased pricing even now into 2020, 2021. Um, how much lumber has gone up? I mean, you're you're talking about lumber prices where it's like a two by four that was uh, commonly three to four dollars is now six eight almost ten dollars in some cases and that's causing uh prices of new homes or new home starts um to go up or uh, new construction to actually go up because of it so uh thinned in 2017 331 dollars for ages less than fifth or ages greater yeah age okay i don't know why it did that that looks right wrong so we'll say ages less than 15 years. So 15 years and uh, less. Um, and so that's the thinning process. So when you go through thinning, um, the point of thinning is uh, for health. And then also seeing what's actually, um, what actually survived or quote unquote made the cut. Uh, you know, cause in some cases deer will actually eat your, um, your small, uh, your small pine, your, uh, your pine tree saplings. Um, and other animals and also destruction uh, due to tornadoes, uh, hurricanes, and other natural disasters will also cause issues with your pine trees. So you want to plant as much as possible and then whatever makes it out of it makes it out of it and you could take that money and go from there. Uh, a friend of mine just actually clear cut I think probably about, oh no man, not even 40 acres. Um, he cleared a, he clear cut some of his acreage and um, he'll be using, and he has like, you know, he made his little proceeds off of that. And he actually gets loan. You can actually get quite a few loans from it as well. Um, and then we can see even in those years, clear, uh, clear cutting. Uh, so thinning is going to produce uh, less in terms of uh, what you actually, what's actually going to go to market. Also, thinning is usually your trees that are, um, thinning is usually trees that are young and aren't the best of uh all of your uh of your um isn't the best of all of your uh in a sense your crop right there we go so uh, that isn't the best of your crop and it isn't the biggest trees or anything else like that and it's somewhat systematic so you'll thin um a good amount and then what that'll do is leave nice lanes so that you can actually harvest your pine straw uh so if we even go over to this picture here, we can see how um, this has been already thinned and this is actually uh, very well manicured and kept. Uh, we can see where some trees are missing in some areas. So those are probably thinned or destroyed or anything or something like that. But we can see where something like this, we can actually go through and easily scrape up, uh, rake up the pine, the pine, pine straw during, um, in between harvesting, in between thinning and clear cutting, I should say. And we can actually go ahead and uh, make money off of that straw. And that straw is mainly used uh, for gardening uh, to keep down weeds and things like that in in, uh, uh, in people's gardens or lawns and things like that. Uh, but we can see here 
um, as the age goes up, of course, the price goes up. They were gonna, we're now we're getting the thicker diameter. Um, we're using those uh, for possibly uh, poles, uh, for building, uh, maybe even getting some lo some decent sized logs out of those. And those are going to be those logs that um, will be used um, maybe for other types of paper products or other types of uh, timber products and things like that. But we're seeing that in 2019, so the thin price from 2017 to 2019 has actually, that actually went down, but the clear cut price actually went up. So we're looking at about 50%. Um, uh, so we'll say 600 to 900, uh, just to like make the numbers easier to work with. But from 2017 to 2019, if you clear cut, um, for instance, if, you know, if everything's good and you have like a nice rolling cut so for instance you might harvest you might harvest this row here uh in 2017 and then this row here in 2019 with that you'll see you'll see that hey listen um that's almost like dollar cost averaging if you will and bringing these things to market at different periods of time and when you're doing stuff like that then you can actually always get um, you can have continuous revenue on a yearly basis. So as that, um, in a sense, uh, once that crop is harvested, you'll replant and then go to the next uh, cycle or area um, uh, in terms of your harvesting. So maybe you harvest every five years per row or what have you, or even every year, depending on what you've done in terms of your planting and planning. And you can make uh, upwards to like I mean, you can make quite a bit, um, and it depends on the amount of acreage. And we'll actually go into one of my favorite sites, LandWatch.com, in this video, and uh, look at some of the pricing of prices of land. This is a long one, boys. Hope you all uh, like this one. So we're seeing that uh, from 600 to 900, that is uh, what 50%. That's a 50% increase in terms of um, the valuation per acre for clear cutting. So something like that, and that, and like again. As you go into it, um, the higher the price, or sorry, the higher uh, the age, uh, the more that you can actually get from it. One thing we notice, though, here, just by just looking at the um, graph or, or this uh, this chart here, uh, at the age of 50 or, or 15, 15 years or less, um, we're looking at uh, a 50 percent increase from between 2017 to 2019. So from here to here. But then as we get a little bit older, the price doesn't change much. I mean, that's a very small amount uh, in terms of increase. In fact, it was more in 2018 than it was in 2019, but still a little, by, by um, $100 more from 2017. So you're looking at, you're getting about the same price. Now, this is good to know because then you're looking at, oh, wow, well, if I keep it long enough, um, you know, uh, having more time or having this grow for a longer period of time or something like that, maybe I'll get more money. Well, this graph actually shows that that's not the case. You're actually getting more money or more bang for your buck in the 16 that 20 year old range. And that looks like it, that wood has the most uses. It's probably even more frequent as well. So you're looking at 15 years, every 15 years, you can actually cycle through and get, um, this is price per acre. So every 15 years on average, let's actually calculate the average here. So we're looking at um, clear cut and we're looking at uh, the, uh, this, set of bar, this set of pricing here. So 1465 plus 1635 plus 1362, add it all up, divided by three. Our average price is 1487 an acre. So now I said I have about seven acres that I want to devote to something like this for pine trees. Um, at seven acres, I'm looking at 10 grand in um, 15 years. So now that's not that much money. So now let's look at a little bit more here. So let's look at my area, White Cross, Georgia. And some of these properties are like pff, driving distance. In fact, this one is actually sold uh, is being sold by my own realtor that uh, I used to buy my house. So really cool. Um, so that's 60 acres at 180 grand. I there's another piece that I saw that was a little even nicer. Uh, 242 acres at 326 grand. I would love to get something like that. But let's really look around this price here. And 
what I like about this property, and I haven't gone out to look at it, I really should just go out there and just look at this sucker, because it's like literally, uh, I can ride my bike over there and get to it. Um, but uh, if we look at the pictures on this one, it already has uh, some pine established on it, and it's already like pine straw can be harvested like this is freaking beautiful like i can look at this and it's like you know whenever this picture was taken but um i can look at that i can already make money off this harvest the pine harvesting here clear cut some of this stuff here to clean this up uh, make sure we manage that and go through it um we can see this tract of land it looks like it has a marshy area as well which is fine for what we're going to do on it uh loblolly pine can actually do well in um air marshy areas we can also see even though this picture is like really zoomed out but we can also see like clear lines and uh almost like defined lines here it's not really like this here this tract of land or even this tract of land here well this is younger it looks like but we can see here, this is just unkept, and this is probably just straightforward swamp area. Um, once you start to get used to, like, how looking at land, you'll see that, like, I can tell that there's water underneath this. Like, you can see the brown, of course, but this is mostly marshy. This is swamp. <laughs> and a lot of this is swamp. So there's a reason why this land is, quote-unquote, cheap. But you can actually do uh, quite a bit with this over time and probably even get rid of some of that swamp water or turn it into a sizable lake. Um, but we can see here that uh, this has actually been planted and we can actually harvest this over time. So um, let's say about, man, a little bit, let's say about 45, 40, yeah. If I split this down the middle, it'll be right about there. If I split it this way. So let's say about 40% of this is actually usable. I, mm, yeah, we'll say about 40 to be safe. We'll say 40% of this is actually usable. So um, that's times seven acres. Uh, let's go back. I think our number was, yeah, 1487, right? So 1487, we uh, do this at um, 15 years. So 1487 times, we'll say uh, 40%. So 40% of 80. Uh, hold on. 80 times 140. What? Oh, man. 40% uh, of 80. I thought I calculated that. 80 times 0.4. No, okay. what the hell was I doing? All right, so that's 32 acres times 1487. We're looking at 47,584 in 15 years. Um, not bad, decent harvest, and something like that on that piece of land. I do have a bit of a calculator for stuff like that. So if I put my price in at 149,500, um, and we're looking at 80, uh, 80 acres, um, yeah, we're looking at simple monthly payments of $747 over a 15 year period. Uh, so we're looking at like a price per acre of um, $1,800, and we're, we're putting down about 10% on something like that. So simple payments, and I, the reason why I do simple payments is because um, you can put interest to it, but you may not actually do your payments through the bank. You may actually just do it actually with the landowner, and you can work with them and um, figure out your payments uh, in terms of like how long and any interest or anything else like that. But something like this, I'm looking at this land. Okay, I'm not going to get as much. We want to get, we want to maximize our profits in terms of what we're going to do with this land. But not bad to at least start and get a nice, nice little piece. But you can do a lot with this, and you can even um, do higher producing or uh, a higher income stock, such as like or <laughs> higher income stock, a higher income um, tree, such as like pecans or anything else. So you can actually do um, a little bit here, a little bit there, and you can even use some of these trees to help, depending on how like wet it is. But you can use some of these trees to actually terraform the area as well. Um, to probably even sap up and dry up some of those areas and um, even move some dirt around to level things off so water doesn't pool in some of those areas. So you can really do some uh, quite a bit with the land to terraform it. Um, I know this video is going on a little bit long, but I do want to touch on a couple of things here. But we're seeing here um, U.S. natural pine uh, values per acre 2017-2019. 
So uh, thinning in 2017 is $478 per acre and in terms of like what you would be getting. Uh, and then clear cut was 1680, uh, 1618, so $1,618 per acre. Now, going into 2019, that has jumped a considerable amount, about $400 or so, uh, which is, yeah, one-fourth. So, like, one-fourth, 25%. So, that's a 25% jump in just clear-cutting from two from 1618 we'll call that $1,600, uh, to $2,000. So... That's a considerable jump, and you can do a lot with that in terms of um, in terms of make maximizing your value per acre uh, based off of the market demand. So it would have been a good time to be selling your timber, or now is a good time to be selling your timber in 2017, 20, oh, sorry, 2019, 2020, or 2020, 2021, I should say. Sorry about that. So um, we're seeing that as time progresses, or as time progresses, you can actually get a decent um, a decent profit, and this is good when you have large acreages. So if I go ahead back to LandWatch.com, LandWatch.com, I love this website. Um, you can do so much with it. So if I look at this actually here, I think I can open this in Google Maps. So terrain, no satellite. Oh, let's look at flood data. There we go. So this is really good and very important. We can see that this shit is freaking wetland, right? We can see that in terms of building a, ho a home site on this, probably not the best thing to do, especially in certain areas. Now, um, as far as like doing something, okay, so this is like 130 acres altogether, but this one parcel is about 80 acres. But um, something like this... Uh, 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 we can see that... Yeah, just as I thought. Actually, yeah, even less than that. Just yeah, just about right. Uh, we're looking at 40% of this land is going to be accessible uh, at different points of the year. So if anything, you're going to have to pick your time of when you're actually going to plant your pine. And in certain areas, you might lose entire crops depending on what happens um, throughout that year uh, because of the flood table or the um, yeah the flood tables in the area. And I say, or the water tables in the area, but the flood, um, in terms of like what's happening in terms of, uh, uh, what's it called? What, what happens in terms of any natural disasters that year or any type of flooding. So there's a lot of water running through this and pretty much totally right when it comes to, um, this picture here. Yeah, totally right. This falls in line with the actual floodplain numbers, but we can see that it actually can be planted, but don't expect much out of this area here. And they did as much as they could over here. Now, as we saw that this could be a part of another hundred, another 50 acres, which is right here. And this would be definitely where you want to, um, in this piece, I would try and go for the full 130 acres or the hundred, yeah, 130 acres that are available because this is going to be drier property, drier land that we can access at all times throughout the year and also good for hunting as well if you want to do that on your tract of land. But you're looking at 83 acres and all that 83 acres is not going to be used or usable uh, throughout um, throughout the year. So that, I mean, that again, I, th there's so much that we could read into this article. I don't want, well, this video is already 30 something minutes long, but you can actually get a lot, um, from this website, uh, forest to market.com. And this is the first video in uh, timber week or, uh, land week. So, uh, that's the first video guys. Thanks for listening as always. And, you know, if, if you're not taking a grain of salt when you're listening to me or my, and taking my advice or any type of information I'm putting out there, you're low on sodium. Do your research. Read articles. Don't be like me. I, I hate reading. I'm not going to lie. But I read it because I want to know more about this and I want to be more informed and, um, you know, know the right places to actually go to and the people to talk to and knowing the lingo uh, in terms of, um, making a uh, an informed decision and making a purchase that can actually really help me out uh, in the long run as always thanks for listening peace